Invincible Season 2 Episode 7 has one of the best scenes I've seen in Invincible in a long time. You really should watch it just for this one scene alone. It's very subtle, so it's possible that you'll miss the importance, but if you pay attention I think you will enjoy it as much as I did. Episode 7 is also much better due to the fact that now we have caught up with what our favourite characters are currently doing. This fact alone makes this episode of Invincible so much more enjoyable. I really like it. It's a positive change and it's really helpful when I'm looking forward to enjoying the latest episode. Good job! Mark has decided that he'll commit himself to getting better grades at school, which is a great decision on his part. He's also made the choice to permit himself the time to spend with his loved ones, including his wonderful girlfriend Amber. I hope they get to spend so much more time together and really build their relationship into one of true lovers. I also enjoyed the scenes in this show when Mark received another visitor from space. A quite lovely lady who knows how to get what she wants. I have to say that I love the character design for this new player and I hope to see a lot more of her. It's good to add more positive female characters alongside Eve and Debbie. Invincible Season 2 Episode 7 is a much more optimistic episode than those that came before. That's why I'm happy to give it a 9 out of 10. And it has me much more excited to see what future episodes will bring. Next week's episode is the big conclusion. And I'm sure it will be a real creative episode and a shining example of what good writing can do to make us excited for next season. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so you can make sure you're here to enjoy next season of Invincible with us. I'm absolutely certain that it will be unforgettably awesome. And now it's time for my favourite part of every review, the wonderful spoilers section. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Mark and Amber begin this fantastic episode with a really quite charming scene of them attending a comic book convention. This scene has so many funny jokes, I'm sure you'll laugh a couple of times at how amusing it is. The funniest part is probably the very opening shot of a supervillain saying all the best supervillain lines. But it turns out it's a comic book fan enjoying their day cosplaying as a really cool kind of Thanos style character. Well played show. You did a good job of making me think we were in the middle of another thrilling action scene before I realised it was a joke. There's a bunch of super fans of Invincible who are dressed up in his costume. They look like they're having a really good time. The artist did a fantastic job giving the fans different levels of quality to their costumes. Some look homemade. Some look like they were bought from a store. They look like they spent a lot of time getting the details perfect. Mark is excited to see his favourite cartoonist, the author of Seance Dog. They have a funny discussion about how the TV show is saving a lot of money by using smart techniques, such as reducing the amount of animation and recycling backgrounds. It's pretty funny because you see when they do the same thing in Invincible. I loved it. I especially like the part where they're talking about saving money by animating characters from behind when they talk, or holding something important in front of their face to draw your attention. Very clever. Amber shows what a good girlfriend she is by attending the convention with Mark, even if there are other things she would like to do. Mark has an opportunity to help Rex, so he agrees with Amber that they should catch up with each other later, while Mark goes and lends Rex a hand. There's a really well designed squid man that Rex is testing his strength against. I like the way he looks and the funny way he talks. He kind of reminds me of one of my favourite Star Wars characters. You're smart, you can think which Star Wars character is my favourite that also talks in a unique manner. It's good to see that Rex has recovered and is getting himself back into the swing of things, trying out his powers and seeing what still works. He even stays positive when he's talking himself through the situation. Mark and Rex both agree that the best thing to do is to get straight back to doing what you know. You have to follow your heart and help where you can. I like how Rex is surprised that Mark has the ability to grow new teeth. That would be a pretty nice superpower to have. I have to admit that this is the first time I thought about that. These characters always have perfect teeth. Even though they are brave enough to help out when the odds are not in their favour, they still come out the other side with a perfect set of chompers. 9 out of 10 dentists would recommend whatever protection they're using. Mark tells Rex that he and Amber were enjoying the day at Comic Con, and Mark decided that they could reschedule so he could help Rex with his work. 
I like that Rex seems to have become a lot more friendly and helpful to his co-workers. He offers to help Mark out by taking his next assignment. What a lovely thing to offer. Rudy has made some drones to help Monster Girl with her training. It looks like he has built her a surrogate so that she can stay safe while the robot body does all the hard work. It's a pretty cool design that he's created. Monster Girl would prefer to do the work herself as she finds that more enjoyable. Rudy is trying his best to help, but they seem to want different things. I hope they can come to an agreement soon as they are two of the best characters in Invincible. Black Samson and Bulletproof share a scene where Black Samson reinforces that the team are a family. They let us know that Shrinking Ray is recovering nicely, which is a huge relief. Bulletproof is asking about the makeup of their team and questioning their abilities, but Black Samson corrects him and tells him that when they work together they can achieve great things. He explains that with time Bulletproof will understand that they just need to work together to get the job done and it will all turn out okay. The Immortal is discussing with Cecil how he would be better off if he could take a little time for himself. He admits that he needs to trust Invincible more, as he is a great asset to the team, and he wishes that he had been more welcoming to Alan when he intercepted him in space. Cecil tells Immortal that he should have a holiday, which would enable him to recover his passion for helping people. When he feels better, he can come back and rejoin the team. When Immortal says home, does he mean his log cabin? Isn't he the great Abraham Lincoln? I hope Kate is there waiting for him when he arrives. That would be nice for him to have that joy in his life again. With the Immortal on holiday, that means that Rudy has earned himself a promotion to the leader of the Guardians of the Globe. That's good because he already has experience in the position and he did a good job before. It's just that there was a lot for him to do. William's boyfriend is having dreams about how he was a robot, and William comforts him by letting him know that he's there for him. They are so caring for each other. These two guys make a nice couple. I would like to see more of them and their relationship because this is leading into the best scene of the season that I was talking about earlier. Rick is his name and he's very sympathetic. He's experienced so much for a young man. He deserves better. Donald wants Cecil to explain everything to him, but Cecil isn't sure that doing so would help Donald. It turns out that they have rebuilt Donald many times over, and each time Donald has asked for them to help him by giving him a fresh start. The videos of Donald are nice as they show him being a real hero and helping other people. Mark visits the school dean, and it turns out it's everyone's favourite African-American police officer, Carl Winslow from Family Matters. Dean Winslow invites Mark to sit down with him and discuss his education. Dean Winslow offers Mark a choice. He can choose to commit to college or choose to commit to something else that is more to his liking. Mark decides that he's going to continue with his education and Dean Winslow agrees to give him the chance and they will meet again in one month's time, hopefully under better circumstances. Donald wants Cecil to help him to forget again. Cecil agrees and informs Donald that he's always been the one who can make the decision for himself. If that's what he wants, they will help him to achieve this goal. Debbie is much happier now that she seems to be enjoying her work at the real estate agency. She must be good at her job because the house she's selling got 14 offers. That's some good work, Debbie. I always believed in you. Her co-worker asks her out on a date and she agrees. It's good to see her getting back on the horse. Oliver seems to be advancing quickly and is growing up to be a very clever boy. He doesn't have any powers, but his babysitter says that they should expect them to start appearing any day now. Mark and his mum have a nice discussion about how Mark can be a better boyfriend to Amber. Mark asks his mum about how Omni-Man was when they started dating. She said it was wonderful and that she always understood that Nolan was helping people. I enjoyed the part where he brought her a tree because he thought it was like flowers but better. Debbie says that she wished Nolan was around more often as he could help her with their children. And life's much better when there's someone else to share it with. Debbie really seems to have come around and genuinely loves Oliver now, not just as Mark's brother, but as a member of the family. Donald meets up with Rick after receiving a call from William and lets him know that there is someone else who has had the same experience of being rebuilt. This is my favorite scene in the season this far. Donald and Rick really share a bond here after having endured similar experiences. 
They share their feelings with each other and realize that there's someone that they can turn to who understands. It's a subtle scene, but it really develops Donald as a character and makes him so much more sympathetic. It truly is a wonderful scene, and I hope we continue this plotline in future episodes. Such a simple scene, yet it says so much. Donald no longer wishes to have his memory altered. He wants to live with his memories. It really made Donald more sympathetic when he said that each time he was rebuilt, it means that he made the world a bit better each time. Great writing, and well acted. The animations helped too, very subtle and allowed the words to soak in. Mark and Amber finally get a chance to enjoy each other's company without any distractions. It seems like they're having a good time. I would like it if they could pick better music for this series. It's a fair bit away from what I like to listen to. They're talking about a nice holiday in Hawaii when a visitor from Mark's father's home planet drops in for a quick visit. I'm actually surprised that they went and made this scene as accurate as it is. I thought they might have decided to make it better for a more modern audience, but thankfully they left it as accurate as possible. Great animation, or should I say lack of animation, as Amber is completely immobile throughout this discussion. It really helps sell the seriousness of the situation. I really like Anissa, and I would like to get to know her better on a more personal level. She seems like a reasonable woman who knows how to get what she wants. I just hope I can satisfy her needs. This was another great scene with Anissa laying out her plan very succinctly. Cecil and Mark both realise that Anissa is way stronger than them, and if she wants something, she can have it. So they have to stall for time and hope that she leaves of her own accord. Luckily, Anissa seems to be fairly amenable and discusses the future for Earth and has a nice environmental message about our need to look after the planet. Anissa makes a pretty compelling argument to just giving her everything she wants. When a kaiju pays an unplanned visit to a cruise ship full of holiday makers, it's time for Invincible to prove to Anissa that he has what it takes to be the best. He works really hard to impress her, but it's Anissa who does the impressing. She easily takes out the kaiju and lets Mark know what she wants from him. I like a girl who comes out and tells me what she wants. Really great animation in the combat scene. A little bit of Zack Snyder, but better, with the super slow-mo. Anissa is clearly superior to Mark in every way. They'd make a good couple, wink. They even animate the falling water after Mark falls into the ocean. Very well animated. Quite the contrary to the descriptions of animation in the opening scenes. Donald and Cecil are discussing their options, but it seems that Anissa is too powerful. Then Donald says something intriguing. Sir, there is another option. What could it be? Was it the screaming sea creature that Mark had to battle when he thought that he was marrying the Princess of Atlantis? Anissa gets the upper hand easily and Mark submits. Anissa informs Mark that he needs to follow orders or someone else will come along who isn't so lenient. This might be the best combat scene since the end of Season 1 between Mark and Nolan. I really enjoyed it. It helped that there was a lot at stake. Mark heads back to Amber and it seems like she's finally becoming aware of the reality of the situation. She seems like she understands what's going to happen from this day forward. All of these superhero events were things that happened to other people and now it's happening to her and she realizes that even having Mark right there does not mean that she's safe. I actually felt a little bit of empathy for Amber in this scene. Instead of her being the needy girlfriend, she comes across as vulnerable and in need of protection. This is the kind of thing I watch Invincible for. Cool battles and coming to terms with the realities of being a hero. I think that this is the first time I've seen a TV show describe the difference between brave and brave. And strong and strong. Many shows try too hard to be nice and end up giving advice to people that makes them feel like they can do anything they set their mind to. It's a nice idea, but reality will soon set these people right. Some really deep topics are brought up in this scene, as they come to terms with whether their relationship can last through whatever the world will throw at them. They got me, man. They made me feel something. Well played, Cho. Mark goes and spends some time on his own and receives a call from his mother. But it's Angstrom Levi 
who has his mother's phone and is asking when he's coming home. Smash cut to silent credits for that classy look. post credit scene of Alan allowing himself to be taken aboard the Viltramite ship. I assume in order to team up with Nolan who is also aboard. They did it! They got the show back on track. I was worried after the last two episodes that the best of the series was behind us, but they managed to pull out another brilliant episode. Episode 7 of Season 2 of Invincible has me awarding it a 9 out of 10. They got the mix just right. Some excitement, some relaxation. Some happiness, some sorrow. A lot of deep topics relating to the lives of superheroes are covered, and covered well. What happens to those we love when our duty takes us elsewhere? What if the ones we love get caught up in the crossfire? Can a relationship endure the hardship of someone who is so duty bound? And should the relationship endure? Or is it better to set those you love free in order for them to have a better life, at the expense of your own happiness? All we need for the next episode to be a winner is for the return of Nolan and the storyline with Angstrom Levi to reach its crescendo. And from the two ending scenes of this episode, I may be a very happy boy come next week. I can't believe I went an entire review without mentioning Shogun. It's great by the way, go watch that too. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.